Hey, what's up y'all? This is Lewis, Lewis Speaks 2022. And today I wanna to talk to you all about the truth about sex. So let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that may be. Let's talk about sex. Let's talk about sex. So today we're gonna to be talking about sex and the spiritual component because oftentimes we really don't examine that piece when we're talking about sex. We talk about sex like it's casual, you know, casual sex, hooking up. And to me, sex is not casual. I think it's something that our generation takes very lightly. And I think that it has caused a lot of unnecessary trauma in our lives. You know, a lot of us don't realize that when you have sex with somebody and you connect with somebody on that spiritual level, you are trading spiritual material. You know, sex is not just a physical act, it's also a spiritual act. And many of us aren't aware of that. We don't know that. You know, you ever left the hookup or you left the company of somebody and you felt depressed or you felt like this low energetic frequency happening in your in your spirit you know it's because you traded energy with this person you traded not only fluids but also spiritual material and i think a lot of us are not really aware of that you know um i think it's easy for us to fall into the trap of thinking that sex is just a physical act you know, we think that after we're done, we could just wash these people off our bodies and we're good. But a lot of times people carry a lot of demons with them, spiritually transmitted demons that they carry inside their spirit and that is transferred onto us when we have sex with these people. And of course, we're not aware because spirits are oftentimes invisible. We can't see them, but we can definitely feel their presence we can feel the presence of an evil spirit. And I think a lot of times this happens when we're having casual sex. We don't know where this person has been spiritually. We don't know where they are in their current spiritual journey. And yet and still we're laying down with them and we're picking up all these spiritual bugs and we don't understand why we're malfunctioning emotionally, physically, you know? It's because sex is spiritual. It's a spiritual gift that we have mishandled as human beings. And I think that this is important to realize. You know, I think a lot of people in relationships have abused sex to the point where they burn out quick. A lot of times in the beginning when you're in the love haze, all you wanna do is have sex with your partner 24, 7, 365 is sex, sex, sex. And what ends up happening is you burn out and you end up feeling dissatisfied with your partner. You know, I think a large part of relational dissatisfaction is not boredom as much as it is overexposure. We are a generation that has been overly exposed to so much. Our relationships now, if they don't look like three ring circuses, we don't want them. If they're not throuples, if they're not polyamorous, if they're not all these different relationship structures, we don't want it because we find monogamy to be monotonous, which to me is a bunch of crap. You know, I'm just going to put that out there because quite frankly, you can definitely enjoy monogamy. In fact, I think it takes a lot of creativity to enjoy monogamy. You definitely have to be creative and try to figure out creative new solutions to try to rediscover yourself and your partner. So that to me takes a lot of willpower, it takes a lot of discipline, but I know that there's other people that might disagree and that's okay. You know, I personally feel that the crime here is overexposure. We have been just exposed to too much. You know, we've seen pornography, which also creates these false expectations about what sex should be like and these false beliefs about what our partner should be doing when we don't realize that a large percentage of the porn actors and actresses out there 
basically are taking all kinds of chemicals, drugs, just to stay erect, just to stay viral, you know, and just to get their libidos pumping. You know, so here we are looking at our partners wondering why they're not able to go for marathon sex for 24 hours straight. Well, they're not medicated. They're human beings. They actually have feelings. They have body parts that need to recover, you know? But oftentimes we're that dissatisfied with our partners and we're always looking for the next bigger, better thing. We're always looking for the next novelty act. You know, my grandmother used to say, you know, you got to learn how to sit down somewhere. Sit down somewhere. You know, a large percentage, a lot of people, they say the divorce rate, you know, my mom told me yesterday that the divorce rate has risen to about 75% of people getting divorced. And a lot of it is due to these false, unrealistic expectations that they have of their partners. It leaves no room for, for, for to just be. You know, women, they have to be 10 different women just to keep one man. You know, they got to basically dress up in this costume. When you look at Beyonce's partition video, she has to be 10 different women just to keep one Jay-Z. It's exhausting. It is exhausting. It is physically, mentally, emotionally draining, especially when you have a full-time job. You got to come home and then play dress up with your partner who you should be able to relax with. It's exhausting. And I think that this is part of the unrealistic expectation piece where we just don't realize that your partner is not going to be fun and exciting all of the time. Sometimes there is going to be a lull. Sometimes there is going to be boredom. And sometimes you have to work on the relationship more, more so than you would if it was just brand new and fresh. You know, in the beginning, there's the honeymoon phase. Of course, everything's wonderful. It's everything's coming up roses because it's new, it's fresh, you're both learning each other. But after years and years of being with the other person, you know what the old saying says, familiarity breeds contempt. You're going to find things about that person that you just don't like. Same way with yourself. You find things about yourself, you know, you find out things about yourself that you really don't like, but you work it out. You realize and you recognize and you leave space for other people's humanity. And I think that that's important. That is really, really important. You know, I think for the couples who have engaged in infidelity, who are always looking for some new novel piece, a lot of them came from homes that were chaotic. And when you come from a home that's chaotic, you have high levels of cortisol and high levels of adrenaline. Right now, I'm going to get definitely clinical with y'all. So bear with me. So you have these high stress chemicals floating around in your mind, cortisol, adrenaline. You become adrenaline junkies, you know, to the point where when you grow up in relationships, if there's no drama, if there's no stress, you will create the drama and stress just to get the high of those chemicals. And so a lot of people, they love their partners, they love their partners, and they just don't understand why they have this insatiable need to cheat or to go out there and sleep around. Well, they need to examine. They need to examine for one, their upbringing, what they learned about love, who first taught them about love. What was your first lesson about love? What did you learn about love? Also look at the environment that you were raised in. Was there high stress levels? Did you notice that people only showed love when they were in dangerous situations? What was your early experiences with love? Because oftentimes we replicate that in our future relationships, you know? And so if you had parents who always gave you this, 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 this high stress level, and it's just this cortisol, adrenaline, you know, you're going to search out and seek that out in your adult relationships. And so that's, that's definitely an important piece to factor in as well. And how that pertains to sex, you know, sex, we release chemicals. There's dopamine, which is a neurotransmitter in our brain. And oftentimes that is the pleasure chemical, dopamine. 
So we're shooting off this dopamine 24 seven. We become dopamine junkies to the point where we can't sit down somewhere. We always have to go from the next person to the next person to the next person seeking that dopamine. I revert to what my grandmother said. We got to learn how to sit down somewhere. We have to learn how to retrain our brain to appreciate the simple things. Because think about it, we're overexposed. Everywhere you turn is sex, 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 sex. You're being fed a diet of sex 24 seven. On the television, everything is sex because they know sex sells. So they're gonna keep on feeding you that. And this is going, we're mainlining it into our brains, into our systems, you know? And we're going out here, we're trading the spiritual material, unaware that we're doing that. And then we're feeling bad. We're feeling just not ourselves. You know, we're feeling like very depressed and we're wondering why we're popping all these pills, these antidepressants, these this. We really have got to examine what we are being fed by this system of things because we are being fed a lot of lies. We're being fed that this belief that you can have sex and there's no consequences. You don't have to take responsibility for another person's emotions. You don't have to be tender with one another. You know, it's just funny how we have tender, but we don't have the tenderness. It's ironic, you know, we have tender, but we don't have the tenderness. <laughs> but I definitely encourage everyone to realize that sex is a gift. It is a beautiful gift, nothing to be ashamed of, nothing to be vilified, you know? Oftentimes people who are quote, sex positive will say that they grew up in households where sex was vilified. And that's, 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 that's wrong. You know, sex is a gift from God. It's a gift, it's a spiritual gift that we have perverted with our own inability to sit down somewhere and act like we got some sense. We basically are just overexposed. We have used sex to avoid dealing with emotions. We have used sex to fill many voids in our lives. We have used sex as a way to deal with boredom, anxiety, stress. We have misused the gift of sex and then we wanna blame sex. But it's not sex, that's the issue. What it is, is our mishandling of the gift. So we have to take ownership of that. I gotta take ownership of that. I've definitely had a couple of casual encounters in my past, you know? And it didn't hit me that I was exchanging this spiritual material with people. I just thought that it was fun. I thought that it was just, I was horny. I wanted to just, you know, have sex. But now, I realize that there's consequences to sex. We may think that we're getting off because we don't get an STD per se, a sexually transmitted disease, but we're getting a spiritually transmitted disease, which is lethargy, which is low energy, which is just low frequency. And we're wondering why we're unable to produce and to feel good about life and to really, really tune in to joy. Well, maybe we need to reevaluate sex. How are we handling this gift? You know, how are we doing this? How are we, are we trying to value it? Are we valuing our partners? Do we only get turned on when we can degrade and destroy someone? You know, it's just a lot of questions, a lot of questions that we have to really answer within ourselves and just really just, you know, Recognize that we're trading energy. It's not just a physical act. It's also a spiritual one. So I hope that this video was definitely helpful in terms of unpacking the spiritual component of sex. I wish everybody a wonderful, healthy sex life, preferably within the confines of a loving partnership, you know, where you can feel safe and not have to worry about so many different sexually transmitted diseases or even spiritually transmitted because when you're with a partner in a monogamous relationship, 
you can definitely unpack the spiritual component and see where they are on their journey. You can assess that. You can ask them certain questions to assess where they're at in their spiritual journey so that way you can feel safe to really, really just share one another. Really share each other without having to worry about where are they in their journey? Are they still in this bitter, angry phase and will they transmit that demon onto you? It's just no. I think that it's time that we come home because we have been lost for too long, too long. And it's time for us to come back home to one another, to really love each other because we're starting to realize that huh, free love that was back in the 70s is not free. It's costing us our beliefs. It's costing us our health. It's costing us our trust in one another. So free love, that ain't free. You know, this belief about just cohabitation and, you know, something just having sex and, you know, that's not working either. The 80s proved that, you know, something else has got to work. We got to reconfigure this because what we're doing is not working. Casual sex, hooking up, just, you know, something this is blow and go down to fuck generation. It's not working. Now we don't even trust one another anymore. Now we're looking at each other like we're criminals. And in a way we are, we're stealing something that doesn't belong to us. We're stealing someone's energy and we don't even know that. And the funny thing is this, we're getting full off empty. We're basically getting full off of being robbed because we're all being robbed. I can let me tell you, I can go in on this, you know, because in a way we are being robbed spiritually and we don't even know it because we're getting the illusion that we're being filled up. We're releasing, we're ah, you know, but in actuality, we're just building the thief inside our own spirits that's robbing us. So once again, don't let that go over your head. Definitely, before you have sex, before you partake with someone, consider that. Consider the fact that you might be exchanging spiritual material with someone who you don't know. You don't know where they are spiritually. So, once again, food for thought. I wish everybody a wonderful, wonderful 2022. Peace, y'all.